This is the early bird abbreviated version, November 15, 2023. Inside D.C., number one, Democrats bail out Johnson on the continuing resolution vote. The House passed his laddered continuing resolution in a 336 to 95 vote with 93 Republicans voting against it. Why it matters, House Republicans are divided again, but so far no Freedom Caucus members have threatened a motion to vacate against Johnson. The Democrat-controlled Senate will likely pass the continuing resolution and Biden is likely to sign it after walking back a veto threat on Monday. Number two. House Republicans question the EPA sue and settle policy. In a letter to the Environmental Protection Agency Administration, Michael Reagan, Representatives James Comer, Rep- Republican Kentucky, and Pat Fallon, Republican Texas, said secretive sue and settle cases between environmental activists and the EPA have expanded under Biden administration. Why it matters. Sue and settle cases happen when an environmental activist group sues the EPA after the EPA misses a legal deadline to take action or review existing regulations, and the EPA settles with the activist group. This allows the EPA to circumvent congressional oversight and environmental groups to impose desired policies and collect tens of thousands in legal fees. Now let's switch gears to the domestic front. Number three, Federal Reserve warns Congress of banking risks. Michael Barr, The Federal Reserve Vice Chair for Supervision told the Senate Banking Committee on Tuesday supervisory officials are focused on banking risks that could spread to the broader economy. Why it matters. Federal Reserve officials describe the banking system as sound and resilient with adequate capital and liquidity levels, but another round of regional bank failures and even a broader financial crisis is possible if interest rates continue to remain high. Number four, FINK, Acceleration of Supply Chain Fragmentation. Quote, we're going to see an acceleration of fragmentation of the supply chains because of geopolitical issues. As we advance artificial intelligence and robotics, there is such an enormous opportunity for nearshoring. Close quote by BlackRock CEO Larry Fink. Why it matters. BlackRock is the world's largest asset management company, giving him unmatched insight, Fink that is, unmatched insight into emerging investment and geopolitical trends. Companies supported by either government spending or the breakdown of globalization should perform well this decade. Number five, the United Auto Workers is targeting foreign car makers in the South. During a Senate Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions Committee hearing yesterday, HELP for short, United Auto Workers President Sean Fain said the UAW will now target foreign automakers with plants in the southern United States. Why it matters. The UAW is now looking to expand union building and possibly strike actions to foreign automakers on the heels of their success against the big three automakers. Other industry unions are watching the UAW's actions and could move to implement similar strategy for contract negotiations, like the Teamsters and the Culinary Workers Union in Nevada. This is another example of in expanding the summer strikes into the winter. Number six, New York redistricting case to hand Democrats more seats. The New York Court of Appeals, the highest court in the state, will hear oral arguments in the congressional redistricting case of Hoffman versus Hochul today to decide if an independent panel will be required to renew and redraw congressional districts before the 2024 election. Why it matters. The 2022 New York congressional map was slightly favorable to Republicans, allowing the GOP to pull off a five-seat flip during the midterm. The Democrats will likely prevail in this redistricting in case of the, as they have in Alabama and Louisiana, which will increase their lead heading into next year's elections and their chances of flipping control of the House. Finally, number seven, outgoing Louisiana Democrat governor wants voting districts redrawn. Outgoing Louisiana Democrat John Bell Edwards said he's, he will call the state legislature in a special session to redraw Louisiana's congressional district map if federal judge Shelley Dick refuses to extend the 15 January deadline for the new map. Why it matters. Outgoing Democrat Edwards argues that incoming governor-elect Jeff Landry won't have enough time to call his own special session and redraw the map before the 15 January deadline. However, Edwards could be moving to prevent Landry and state Republicans from drawing a new map that, while Required to include two black majority districts could tighten Republican control over the remaining congressional seats. Edwards could also be concerned that Landry will delay the redistricting. Shifting gears to the geostrategic side of the House. Number eight, U.S.-China Commission. China has tech to track our subs. 
According to the U.S.-China Commission's latest report, China has all the technology in place to track the U.S. Navy's submarine force. Why it matters should be obvious, but China is rapidly closing its tech gap with the U.S. and has exceeded it in some ways. This revelation will likely push Congress to further study AI applications and restrictions on AI and associated technology export. Of note, the report does not specify that China can track our submarines, but they have all the pieces to gain that ability. This does not mean the tracks have targeting quality data. Enemy ships would still have to use their own sonar to target submarines. This technology could provide significant early warning for a blockade as the U.S. outclasses China in sub-technology and warfare. Finally, number nine, Erdogan designated Israeli settlers as terrorist. Turkish President Erdogan said in a speech this morning that he will work on the international stage to ensure that Israeli settlers in the West Bank are recognized as terrorists. Why it matters. Erdogan has previously called for a pan-Islamic response to the Israeli-Hamas conflict, igniting concerns that Islamic countries could agree to a military intervention against Israel. Erdogan's pledge to pursue diplomatic pressure may cool fears of foreign military intervention in the near term, but labeling Israel as a terrorist state only supports a broader conflict. Increased diplomatic pressure from Jordan and Egypt, mounting civilian casualties in Gaza, and U.S. material support for Israel's campaign could spur Hezbollah to open a second front along the Israeli-Lebanese border through a catastrophic attack. Historically, Hezbollah officials have publicly stated that Palestinian resistance against Israel is the only conflict that requires a pan-Islamic jihad. Israel is in a no-win situation as their goal to root out Hamas threatens to pull the U.S. and Middle East region into the conflict. That is the end of the abbreviated early bird brief for November 15, 2023.